Looks like F1's going back to Madrid. But is it yet another street circuit? Well, not quite. F1 has officially announced the return to Madrid as the home of the Spanish Grand Prix from 2026 through to 2035, replacing now infamous Circuit de Catalunya, who's been the host since 1991. You know the one, the circuit that everybody loves to hate, and yet when it's being threatened of removal, everybody suddenly loves it again. Right after they got back the lovely final corner. If I were the track organizer and then I found out that Madrid could easily replace us, I'd be just like, oh, come on, I did everything you asked me to do. One thing I want to make absolutely clear here is that this is not replacing the Circuit de Catalunya entirely on the F1 calendar. According to various reports, this might be running in conjunction with the Circuit de Catalunya. Two tracks in Spain, potentially. Now that is interesting. It might be called the Catalan Grand Prix, the Montmelo Grand Prix, the Barcelona Grand Prix, just not the Spanish Grand Prix. It's kind of like how the San Marino Grand Prix takes place in Imola, even though Imola is in Italy, and now it's a complete word spaghetti of a name that I cannot be bothered to say on this video and I don't want to waste your time. But the whole idea of Madrid hosting a Grand Prix, that is not new. In fact, in 1969, we even had a Madrid Grand Prix. And then, of course, there's the permanent circuit in Hoama, which is about 20 minutes away from where the proposed Madrid circuit is taking place. That's hosted the Spanish Grand Prix about nine times or so. But wait a minute, I hear you say. If there's a permanent circuit there and it's hosted Formula One before, why don't we just go there then? I know what you're going to say, but if you're familiar with my content, folks, you have to then think about FIA grade certification and the FIA grade that Harama Track has is grade two, which means it's not eligible for selection unless there is huge amounts of investment put into the track to make it grade one where it could be considered. But it's not like the track organizers haven't tried. They have. In fact, last year, they did write to Stefano Domenicali with a letter of intent to say that they would be making changes. So that means Formula One would consider them for a future Spanish Grand Prix. They said it would take about 50 million euros or so to make all the changes. And they even got the chap who refreshed Zanvor to F1 specifications to be in charge of the project. In fact, he, Jano Cefeli, even said that it would be more cost effective to give Harama a makeover than to construct a temporary street circuit in Madrid, which is kind of what's happened right now. And of of course, in a way, Mr. Savelli would say that because otherwise he wouldn't get a contract and he wouldn't be making a lot of money out of it. But to be fair, if you're getting the guy who made Zanvort look pretty impressive, considering where it is and the limited space that it has, that's not too shabby. Those bank circuits of Zanvort are pretty nifty and they are very iconic. So any changes made to Horama, most of it is remaining the same since it first hosted the Spanish Grand Prix in 1968. It's yet another iconic track. And I know that a lot of you people will be saying, oh, they overlooked a classic track in favor of a brand new one to make loads of money. Yeah, I can understand why you're thinking that. We have been burnt many times with many of these big buck street circuit projects. We've initially rallied against it, but it turned out those street circuits turned out not to be too bad. But I do agree. There is a limit to the amount of street circuits we would have on a particular calendar. I'm more aggrieved about the potential of Osaka replacing Suzuka and that being a street circuit. You can't get rid of Suzuka. Now that is an iconic Formula One track. This isn't the case of Barcelona just running in tandem with this new track. Suzuka may potentially be gone. This year's Suzuka Grand Prix may be the last one. You can't get rid of that one. So this one, this isn't it in my opinion. There are plenty of good things to talk about this, but it's a shame that Harama wasn't considered. According to the circuit organizers with Ephemera and Formula One, this is not a full-on street circuit, but a hybrid circuit with some parts of the circuit being permanent, which will most likely be the twisty section over the motorway, splitting the current derelict site and the built-up area on the left side. There's roughly about 20 corners and the proposed lap time is about like a minute and 32 seconds. And what I find really interesting is that there are two tunnel sections underneath the motorway. That's fun. I do like a tunnel. And even though the F1 cars currently don't make a really exciting sound, remember, this track is going to be coming in 2026 and they are promising to have more exciting sounds for the brand new regulation cars. So two tunnel sections. I really hope they put some microphones down there. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's about 5.4 kilometers in length or so with a potential projected audience cap of 140,000 on race day, which would be the biggest single day figure on the entire Formula One calendar. And of course, there's going to be plenty of VIP sections. I really wish they didn't talk about that kind of stuff because we Formula One fans don't care about that kind of stuff. You know, we just want to know, can you get there? Are there places to go? And is it cheap? Well, 
I hope it's certainly a lot cheaper than the British Grand Prix. My own home circuit, I have no interest in going to because it's too darn expensive. But I don't think this entire project is soulless or a cash grab or something like that. This isn't a Visa cash app racing bull sort of affair, or what we like to call it here, VCOB. Now, this seems to be all part of the plan for F1 to become net zero by 2030 without going fully electric, which they can't do, by the way, since Formula E has exclusive rights to an all electric series until 2039. So Formula One can't do that. So don't worry, Formula One isn't going all electric. Now, before all that, I was watching the public presentation you got to listen to this. Or as Carlos Sainz would put it when he was talking about his pancakes, he's so good. But the real reason we're going to this track over the likes of Harama or even Jerez, which is a grade one track, by the way, is that this is all part of the plan for F1 to reduce carbon emissions and being more kind to the environment through transporting stuff a lot more effectively to the track. Since the airport for Madrid is basically five minutes drive away, and in theory, according to the predictions from the organizers of the track, 90% of public spectators could get to the track through public transportation either through public links from the airport or from the city or from various other locales through buses and trains. So long as it's safe, reliable and frequent, the means to get to the circuit and from the circuit without too much of a cramming in situation, that could be good. It would make it so stressless. In fact, if there are really good links from the airport to the circuit, I probably would even go. I could just fly to Madrid, go and see the track and then go home again all in the space of a day, easily, instead of having to traipse hours and hours to a circuit and then try and get the last flight home or something. That is a really good noble idea in my opinion. I like that angle, they really should lean into that more. Because as we Formula 1 fans want to know, is it easy to get to and is it cheap? I hope it is. Because most people who will be going to this Grand Prix will come from different countries, so to make it easy to get to the track and then go home? That's really good. With Harama and Jerez, you would have more limited options in terms of public transportation, and the freight logistics would be a little bit more tricky since you would have to use the motorway guaranteed, instead of probably just going from the airport and then just a quick little drive and then you're there. It's all to do with convenience, creating more jobs, and most importantly, it adds more money to the Madrid economy. About roughly a half a billion euros that they estimate. And considering what we saw in the likes of that Top Gear episode where the three guys made the Madrid Grand Prix part of a derelict area of Madrid, it's pretty necessary. Madrid has been battered over the years due to various financial crises and whatnot. In fact, Spain's been through the ringers quite a bit, so this trying to prop up the economy, that can only be a good thing, right? Means everybody benefits, hopefully. So in a way, I can't be mad with F1 about this particular circuit. It doesn't seem like a bad idea. This seems like a sustainability effort rather than just I want some of that money, please. Thank you very much. Certain areas of the world which are kind of dubious. It's not nearly as disruptive as the likes of Baku, Vegas and Monaco on the local area. You don't have to close the track for multiple days just to get it all up and going. You don't have to spend months slowly putting it together and then causing traffic jams amongst people. And again, it's making use of land which is currently going unused. And they could make it look really, really nice. You can make yet another park. As for the circuit itself, to me, on first glance, it looks like a dog looking upwards and sticking its tongue out in my eyes, albeit a very big tongue. And yes, I know over the course of many weeks, there have been rumors that there's a roundabout section knocking around, but I'm pretty sure that they're probably only going to use a tiny sliver of it and then make the proper main circuit of itself just go past and then use a little kink on it or something. It's looking much better than the initially suspected layout, which we initially had, whose twisty section basically looked like a shadow puppet claw hand. Yeah, kind of like... There are a couple of 90 degree turns, but they don't seem to populate the entire circuit. It's not like a stop start motif like we see in Baku. There's that really tight left hand turn one, which in of itself is less common in F1. The most similar tightness and leftness I can think of is Tamburello at Imola and turns one and two at Jeddah. And they do pull up some good moments because remember the situation with Fernando and Esteban at Jeddah? that one year and then of course Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in 2021 when it was damp and you had loads and loads of fireworks but I'm not sure about the last two turns though it kind of reminds me of Sochi and it doesn't really fill me with much excitement those last couple of turns in fact it reminds me of the initial specification of Abu Dhabi's last two corners before they slightly chamfered them to make them a little bit more curvy there are going to be four overtaking opportunities which will be really good for easy overtaking as far as I can tell I'm not too sure about that one there are two I think of going around the back straight about turn four and five before that supposed roundabout section. Maybe that long sweeping right hander going round again, going back to the main, if 
Emma complex. The other places I'm not quite sure about, but again, I love the fact that there are some tunnels there, and hopefully with these brand new sounding F1 cars, it'll sound mighty. And as for DRS zones, I think I can only see maybe one, possibly two if you include the start finish straight. But who's to say that DRS as we know it will still be around in Formula One come 2026? It might be completely different. We may not need as many to get proper overtaking. So in terms of the overall concept of the track, I don't think it's too bad. It's not a typical street circuit. It seems like a Sochi-like concept of a track nestled within another grander area, only in a much better, more impressive city and with more relevance. It uses up unused land. It does have a few quirks that make it stand out from other typical street circuits, so it has some character in a way. And also, it gives people yet another reason to go and see the local area. There are plenty of cultural spots in that area, and not to mention, it's right next to Real Madrid City of Sports. So if you're a football fan, you can go and probably see a Real Madrid game or just go and see the local area, which is supported by Real Madrid. This is just yet another use of that particular area of land. It's not in the bum end of nowhere like the Korean Grand Prix was meant to be. Oh, remember that one? They were promising to build a, a big metropolis-like city thing with the Korean Grand Prix circuit at the heart of it all. And then that didn't happen because multiple reasons. This already, it's already got loads of stuff around. It's got good transportation links and it's just easy to get to. I know that we Formula One fans don't like change necessarily, and we lament the idea of classic Formula One circuits being replaced by cash grab street circuits. But even then, the current street circuits that we have seen, a few of them have actually turned out to have warmed up to people or at least become less chilly to. The Corniche circuit, for example, Many people who play the F1 game absolutely adore the track because there's a lot of fun in terms of playing. The Baku circuit, that's managed to warm up many people's hearts and it does have its moments and it does actually carry off a sprint Grand Prix weekend pretty well. And then of course there's the Vegas Grand Prix. That turned out better than most feared because you know the temperature lent to itself and it gave it a certain other characteristic and it played off pretty well. Let's just hope that the build up towards that event is far less disruptive for the local populace. And once again, from what I can tell based on reporters in the area, they are not looking to replace the circuit to Catalonia. From the looks of it, we are going to have two Spanish circuits, and that is only a good thing. They have a Formula One legacy now, whereas before Fernando Alonso came along, it really wasn't as solid. The Oviedo driver really did give Formula One a little bit of a shot in the arm, and now Formula One is almost as popular as MotoGP is in that country. That is a really good effort from effectively one guy, and Carlos Sainz is now helping to sustain it for a little bit longer. And also, they're not looking to do a tandem sort of thing where they share the Spanish Grand Prix slot on the calendar with another circuit, like what they were hoping to do between 2012 and 2016 with Valencia and the circuit to Catalonia. They were hoping to share that circuit, but now the Valencia circuit is now remaining abandoned. And in a way, this Madrid circuit is kind of trying to do what the Valencia area did, trying to make use of that spot and give it some more sense of purpose and another reason to go to that area of Valencia. Unfortunately, the track organizers dropped the ball and we get to where we are today with the area being unused and the place for many F1 channels to eventually go for a pilgrimage one day. We're not going to be seeing what the Nürburgring and Hockenheim did in sharing the German Grand Prix moniker. Again, I'm more concerned about Suzuka being bumped off the calendar in place of a street circuit in Japan. Yes, I know the idea of a Tokyo street circuit sounds fantastic from the Gran Turismo games, but you can't get rid of Suzuka for that. You just cannot. This idea though, I think it's got good intentions. Sure, the idea of Formula One and trying to gain as much American money as possible and money from every single source they can find. Yes, that's been questionable and something of a major concern for a lot of fans. But this idea though, I think it's got legs and I would actually like to see it and make my final judgment when we actually see the track in full action. But I'm a lot more optimistic than the likes of Miami, which is built around a big stadium. This track though, I think it has potential. And the idea behind it in terms of public sustainability and transportation links being practical, that's a win. So I'm not overly pessimistic about this one. And I think the 2026 cars will have a riot around here. And speaking of the 2026 cars, we now have a better idea about how they will perform and what they will look like. But it doesn't seem to be Max Verstappen's cup of tea. Why doesn't he like it? Well, if you go watch this video next, I will tell you all about these cars. Hmm.